Hi everyone, today I'll be giving you a first-hand look at Wallboard and what makes us unique as a content management system. I'll be showing you how easy it is to manage screens remotely, create content from templates using our editor, and how to schedule that content to play at the times you want it to display. Before I get into the details of Wallboard, let's talk about how I got here first. I just went to editor.wallboard.us, I've logged in with my credentials, and once I've done that, I'm placed into my Wallboard portal like you see here. However, one of the first things that I mentioned is that we manage screens remotely. So that's the first panel that you see here. Now, what do I mean by manage them remotely? If this is a screen that I've already added to Wallboard, I just right click on it. And this gives me a ton of commands to, again, manage it remotely. So I could restart that screen. I could even uh, maybe adjust the volume of it or change the orientation of it. So maybe it needs to be in portrait as opposed to landscape. I could even assign a presentation by clicking content, assign content, and choosing something from the dropdown, such as like a, a weather forecast or something like that. I can also manage a screen by dragging and dropping. So if I scroll down a little bit, these are uh, a type of presentation we can create called loops. And all I do is just drag and drop that presentation onto the screen. It will change here. And then on the screen, it will change again, basically saying, hey, I'm playing something new. To add a screen, it's super easy. Um, once you install our application, it will give you a four digit code on the screen. So all you do is click on this blue icon, then click on screen, and then you'll see where you can enter that four digit code, as well as give your screen a name, like for example, Fourier or video wall to let you know where it's at, and then press save. Now, if you have a large amount of screens or screens in different locations, you can also organize them. So in this case, I have a group of screens. Let's say I have a Dallas location and a Los Angeles location. And when I click into Dallas, you can see that I have two screens inside of here. Not only can I manage them independently by dragging and dropping a presentation onto an individual screen, but I can also manage them both at the same time. So I could, for example, assign this presentation to both of the screens, or I could have right clicked on it to told it to maybe adjust the volume of both of them. So not only can I manage screens independently, but I can also organize them into groups like you see here. Another thing I can do is I can permission who has access to these screens. So let's still use the example of that I have a Dallas office and a Los Angeles one. If I come over here to manage teams, this is the first way that we make it so you can limit who has access to what. So in this case, I have assigned certain screens, presentations, files, anything else you can think of in Wallboard to this specific location. And if I wanna come here and let's say toggle Dallas and click apply, as an admin, I can see what it would look like when that user logs in from Dallas. So they don't see any of the screens they're not supposed to have control over. They only see what they need to, like you see here, and they only see their loops. They only see their presentations or contents uh, that you've created in Wallboard for them to have access to. So if you need to um, you know, sort of drill down who has access to what, advanced permissions and teams are a great way to do that. Now let's talk about our first different type of presentation wallboard, and that's called loops. Loops is basically full screen images or videos. So I'll click into our first loop here. And by saying it's full screen images or videos, think of it almost as a slideshow. Everything over here on the left-hand side is inside of our timeline, or again, just think of it as a slide deck. And I can control the order in which these slides are gonna play in. I can even add a new slide or a media asset that I've already uploaded, such as a image or video and drag that in. I can even say, I want these slides to play for 10 seconds each. So I can just type that in here. And then when I click play, it's gonna allow me to preview this presentation prior to sending it to the screen. I can even take this link, send it to a colleague, and they could preview what I'm seeing here. So this is a great peer review tool, but it's also helpful because since we're cloud-based, we wanna be able to preview our presentations prior to sending them to a screen. You also don't wanna be sitting in front of that screen, testing content, see what it looks like. You can do everything remotely now from your browser. You don't have to have anything installed on your PC. So creating content, even simple playlists like you're seeing here are super, super simple. We can even schedule from this panel as well. So if I click on this slide here and I click on play always, I can now maybe say I want this image to play from the first of the month to the end of the month. And then let me change the year here. And then I can say maybe play from noon to, I don't know, five o'clock. So immediately you can see I can schedule there. Now, let's say I wanted to upload something new like we see here in the center panel. Where do I do that? Well, if I click on this folder icon, this is gonna take us to what we call our file manager. 
This is where I could upload something from my PC by clicking this icon here. I could even connect a shared folder such as a Google Drive folder or a OneDrive or SharePoint folder. So in a nutshell, this is where we upload our font files if you want to use custom fonts, uh, your images, videos, any of the, the files of the such, you would upload that here. Now, I mentioned our cloud uh, folders such as Google Drive and Microsoft. Well, what we can do with this is, yes, it's helpful because I can automatically bring assets in as they're added into those folders, so you don't have to do double the work of uploading. However, it's also helpful because I could set it up where maybe I give someone access to that OneDrive or SharePoint folder or Google Drive, and as they add or remove images or videos from that folder, they then get added or removed from the screen. So I can even sync up that folder with a screen and those changes will be sent within a minute. This also gives us the opportunity to bring in things such as PowerPoint files, Word documents, Excel files, all of the Google versions, uh, such as Google Sheets, for example, um, into the editor. So for example, if it's easier for someone to edit in Google Slides or PowerPoint, let's just feed that into a zone of the content and you can then maintain your, your branding guidelines and all those things. We'll see more of that here later, but this is just a workflow where you can make someone's life really, really easy where they don't even have to manage everything from Wallboard, they just manage it from OneDrive and that automates onto the signage. So I'm gonna quickly get out of here, but that's loops and super simple to get started. Now let's go ahead into our content editor here. Before I go into the editor, I wanna go ahead and preview a presentation so you can see the big difference between a content and a loop. You'll notice here, everything's dynamic. So on the left here, these are clock widgets. There's actually three of them for the hour, minute, and seconds. Here in the center, this is a video widget. And I was able to drag and drop all of this to be configured in the layout that you see here. We also have a weather icon. This will update throughout the day as the weather changes. In this case, we have a different slide. This is actually showing a blog post from our blog on our website. This could also bring in things such as social media posts. Think of LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, etc. cetera. Um, so the idea is, is that you can create and customize this slide however you want, but it will keep bringing in live information so you never have to edit it. It just updates automatically. You can also see a weather forecast. This will also update automatically and it will basically tell it to bring in the weather of wherever I said or zip code it's located in. And again, we'll go to another slide here, which you'll see in a second. Um, this is a good example of how you can use our content editor to edit templates. So for example, if you want a Canva-like experience where you can click on the text here and click on the image and quickly switch it out for something different, you can do that. All while maintaining your branding guidelines, such as your colors, your logo, your custom fonts, anything of the such, the content editor is perfect for that. So let me click out of this, let me click into the content editor and I'll quickly go over how we change a couple things in it. So really quickly, just to give you the lay of the land, over here on the left, this is basically that timeline editor we saw, but instead we call it playlist. So I can change the order in which these slides will show, I can even change how long they're gonna show for. Now, in this case, I wanna edit this slide here. You can technically start from a blank canvas if you want to. So everything here is just an independent you know, widget and I can move it around wherever. I can even you know, manage how big or small it is. I can even click on a widget and then go to the properties and edit how it looks. So maybe I don't like this font style so I wanna change it to something else like you see here. And maybe I don't like how this you know, icon looks for the weather widget so I wanna change it as well. Well, I'll just come here to our properties and then I can maybe change it to a different icon set. I could have something that's a little bit more colorful. I could even just make it white so it matches my color scheme. Maybe I wanna change out this logo or move it around. Well, I could move it around here. I'm just gonna leave it where it's at. But if I click on source here, it takes me to our file manager that we saw before and I can choose a different version of the wallboard logo. There we go. From there, maybe I just wanna change a couple different things such as how this background looks to match my colors. So I can even change things a little bit so that you know maybe this matches the wallboard red a little bit better. And I'll change the brightness, maybe the contrast. And there we go. I think that's good for now. I don't like this video, so I could change that out as well. I could just click here, click on source, and I could select another video from our file manager. I could even, for example, drag in a YouTube video. So maybe I wanted to display a YouTube video. 
I just drag in the widget, make it the size I want it, and as long as I include the, the video link here, that will display the video. So now that you understand how the content editor works, you can understand that as I add more and more widgets here, like you saw with the YouTube widget or this video widget here, it then becomes a layer that I can then edit and I can change properties to change how it looks. So there's a plethora of different types of content you can create using this, uh, whether it's automated feeds like the social media feed I showed you earlier or coming from our blog in this case, or whether we can give you that Canva-like in interface where maybe I change out certain things or you know double click on what I wanna change and then I can change it in the editor here. I can also do it from my properties panel so I could say that Maybe you know I want to talk about a um, upcoming webinar or change the text to something a little bit more specific. And again, I can change where things are gonna be placed and so forth. So now that we understand again how we can edit content, move things around, how do you get started? So if you wanted to get started with something like you saw here, you can use what are called templates. So if I click on template, pick a template, you can see that I have private and public. Let's talk about that. Public templates are available to everyone on the Wallboard server. So if you have access to all of these, which you should, you can go ahead and, for example, click on one. Let me just go to the weather forecast. Click here and click select, and I'll click insert. This will insert a new slide. So the private templates, those are templates I've already customized. So if I don't want to customize something every single time after choosing a public template, I can then make it a private template so other people within my organization can use it. So I can click here on weather, hit select, and as you can see, I can quickly insert a template that's already been edited. So that's how we can quickly build presentations in Wallboard and use our template editor or our content editor in general to customize your digital signage. Now, the last thing I want to mention is our scheduler. So if I click on schedules here, this is how we have things play at certain times. So for example, over here on the left-hand side, these are all our presentations. I can drag and drop one of these presentations, for example, this one on the 11th, and now it's going to play all day on the 11th. In this case, this is going to play all day, but in if I click on the 12th here, I can actually say that something's going to play from, let's say, like 11 to 1230. Then maybe I want to switch over to from something at 1230 to 3. Now, if I go back to our month view, you'll see that this is playing for the whole day and these are only playing for a certain part of the day. Well, what's going to play for every other day? Well, I could continue assigning certain presentations to play at certain times. However, I could also select a default content. So all these blank days and even some of the hours I didn't assign content to on the 12th, it will then switch to your default content. This is what you want to play 95% of the time and is your normal signage that you would want to show if you didn't have anything specific to show on a particular date or time. So it's super easy to schedule. What you see is what you get. Just drag it in and have it play at that time and it will play. I wanted to leave you with this. So with the content editor, there's a ton of different content that you can create. So we're not just bound to corporate signage like you saw with the you know, event announcements or the weather forecast. We can even bring in things like directories. So for example, I could even uh, attach a Excel sheet or a Google sheet. So I don't even have to change that direct directory information in Wallboard. I can use those platforms. That makes it really easy because then you can just share that with someone and they don't even necessarily have to learn Wallboard. They know how to use Excel, Google Sheets. They can change that information there. We also see that being done with menus, for example. So any way that we can make the content creation process simpler or the revisions easier in the future, we'll do that, whether it's through an integration or creating things in the editor. This is an example of bringing in a PowerPoint file, for example. News feeds. So we saw our social media feed. This can also be used for news feeds. So if you wanted automated content that you don't have to update, we can create dynamic content using our editor and everything you can customize, whether it's your logo or the overall layout. So with that, I'll leave you here, but thank you so much for staying engaged with me. I hope that Wallboard can make a difference for you and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much.